April 25, 2024. This is the S&P 500 E futures mini on the 2000 tick chart using NinjaTrader 8. This is what the chart looked like today. It was economic data that was released at 530, which is about right here. We see this big drop. This is the advanced GDP and unemployment claims because unemployment claims usually come out on Thursdays. And then at seven o'clock, there was another piece of data that came out, which was the pending home sales which I don't know, it didn't really do that much. And then it did create kind of a small, I don't know if it created, but and then a small rally occurred. <clears throat> Overall, the price action looked like it was kind of, it's hard to say it was really all within a range, but it could be captured the pre-market highs and pre-market lows where majority of the trading occurred, or price action occurred, but it looked like it was kind of a big U-shaped structure. Start at the highs, sold off, consolidated the bottom, and did a slow rally up. Then I consolidated the end, and then this is the after the close, and it had this gigantic spike up. I, I'm thinking that this big rally is because there were a few big institutions, big guys, big companies releasing their earnings today, one of them being Microsoft. And I took a quick glance over on uh, another chart and it looked like Microsoft rallied pretty hard. <clears throat> and the second company also is Google. Google is also Alphabet. It's also a really big company, and they they take a big position or they take a big portion of the overall market. So if they go up, it usually drags up a bunch of other companies. I think they help contribute to this gigantic rally. So I'm going to get into the trades. <clears throat> I actually didn't take any trades today, and I didn't even trade yesterday. And I think some of the things that were happening to me yesterday carried over to today, so I knew not to trade with any. Uh, money today because it would have been I don't think I would have been in the right mindset so I did mark out some trades that I think I would have taken and then uh, overall trading itself wasn't the easiest today it was a little tricky and it was slow so the volume was so so and it just it just didn't look like a, it would have been a winning day for me so I'm okay walking away with no trades hopefully tomorrow things will get a little bit better <clears throat> So this is what the pre-market looks like. So pre-market, you can already tell there's a gap down from where it closed in regular trading hours and kind of where it opens. And typically the market likes to fill those gaps and you'll see later in the day it does. But this is what we saw in the pre-market. It looked like it was in this small little trading range that's about 12 points, which is actually kind of large. It sells off and then it follows and goes down on this yellow down channel. And this is where I kind of drew the pre-market highs and pre-market lows. It looks like it breaks out of this yellow down channel and enters this consolidation range, this trading range, and it just hops sideways into the open. Technically, you do have a new high here, first entry long pullback. You have a second entry long here, but I just didn't like this setup. <clears throat> and if I was going to be trading, I I I don't like this below the EMA when the EMA looked like it was keeping prices down previously. It just feels a little tight. Plus, this is 36 seconds after the open, this candle. So prices or the candles had already printed all the way out to here, and it's only been half a minute. So that leaves me you know, extra cautious, especially if it's a setup that I feel is a little ambiguous. I definitely don't want to be taking a trade or attempting a trade because nothing's worse than jumping very early into a trade right at the market open and taking a loss because then that just sets up your whole day that you already know you're working from a hole that you have to dig yourself out of. So unless it's like something just absolutely bulletproof, it's like clearly following a trend from the pre-market that's very strong, very apparent, it's inside a trend channel, looks clean. I'm just gonna avoid it, let let prices just play out because it's only been 36 seconds. The rest of the day is still ahead of ahead of ahead of you. So there's still potential for other setups to occur. So there's no need to just quickly jump on this one, especially when this is what I would consider mediocre. <clears throat> Prices break down, it hits this support, this pre-market lows, and it breaks down below. This is uh, try to fix this chart, make it look a little cleaner. Okay. It bounces around. It starts finding support, which I drew as a line here, and it looked like it was in its own little sub trading range. This purple channel, this purple range doesn't exist yet. 
technically you have a new high here. First entry long pullback. You have a second entry long here, but I don't like the looks of this. Consolidates, it pushes up. It comes back up, and I think, okay, for sure, I'm in some kind of resistance point here. So I drew a line here, and where this dotted line was, actually, I just correct it right now and just fix it later. This is with the trading range I was working with at the time. And I'm thinking, okay, it's obeying the highs and the lows. It kind of obeys the midline from time to time. It comes up. So I see a new low. It's a first entry short pullback. It's about to create a second entry short. I like this, and I thought it was a possible short trade because it's a second entry short for sure from new lows. First entry short, second entry short. It pushes up on the screen channel, breaks out. It had one test of the high, which could be considered meeting the you know new high but what i also like that it has kind of like a triple test or it's at least the top of the range and it has shown in the past it clearly has trouble breaking through this so i thought this is a potential trade <clears throat> after seeing this candle kind of confirm the second entry short i think i would have entered one tick below here usually i like to enter at the lows but i'd probably give it a little bit of breathing room enter probably one tick below Try to hope that I'll get the trade. Hopefully something spikes on the next candle and picks me up. It would have. I would have gotten in. And likely this candle would have given me the scalp. Prices move down. So I'm expecting prices to come back down to touch the bottom of this purple range. Or, you know, kind of where this blue one is. It goes to the bottom. It breaks through. I'm thinking maybe fail breakout with another push back in. Here it looks like it tried to go back in. It's chopping sideways, so I'm definitely thinking stay out of this trade. There's doji here and just had another recent doji. Just it's a little, it's a little unsettled. Prices are still trying to figure itself out. And it continues downwards. Spikes up. <clears throat> Hits here. I see it touches the EMA and gets rejected. So this could be considered a failed breakout pullback. Unfortunately, there's no clean setup here. This isn't a, a very good signal bar either to go short. And it continues downward. So it breaks out this yellow down channel, makes it breaks out and then makes a new low, which is again makes another new low. So I'm thinking, okay, maybe the downtrend has played out for this orange channel, excuse me, this yellow down channel, but I need a clean setup. So technically you do have a new high here, first entry long, second entry long, second entry long here, nothing at this point in real time would have told me to get a trade ready. Then when you see this and it's a confirmed second entry long double bottom, you could consider maybe going long here, but I just wanted this to be a bullish bar. And it feels a little, you could, you could make the argument that the yellow down channel has played out because it broke and it made a new low. But I wasn't too confident in this setup, so I wanted a higher low. And you don't get a higher low. You do get a higher low here, but this isn't very convincing because now it's a bearish bar. So it could come pushing back down. I have no idea. So it definitely doesn't give me confidence. I needed this to be a bullish bar. But now potentially you have a higher low here and it pushes up. So this higher low, maybe there's a trade here. It's a break of this orange channel. Technically it's, it's a first entry short, but it also could be a higher low. So now, now that I see that it is pushing up above, I want, instead of a higher low now, I kind of reversed it just being a little more conservative. I want a failed second entry short above the EMA, then I'll know the reversal's actually starting to take place because I don't want to see that this is one push down, one attempt up, push down, new low, maybe one attempt up, new low again, and then now it's pushing one push up, potentially a second leg up. Maybe it's re-entering this pre-market range, but I don't know that. So I wasn't too clear in my mind, and I think I just wasn't clear in trading today. So it's kind of the reason why I was very reluctant to actually trade anything real. <clears throat> So I just waited. Here it creates a new low, first entry short, second entry short. Now I like that this second entry short ended and confirms the second entry short, but this, when you see this, I'm thinking immediately, this could be a failed second entry short. The EMA is holding. It doesn't look very convincing that bears want to push this back down because it created a second entry short, but at the last minute it closed back up high. So this looks like there's enough momentum to push back in for a possible trade. <clears throat> Although the orange uh, orange up channel has made a new high, it could be one push up and it could be a second attempt. I just like this setup, so I thought maybe there's a possible long trade here because the downtrend of this the uh, downtrend of this yellow down channel, I am more convinced that it's played out now because it had a break and a new low and it, you know double confirmation pushed down to a definitive new low. So I'm thinking there could be a correction pullback up now. 
So it looked like it would have worked. If you kept your stop one tick below here, looks like you would have survived. And if you're going for one point and you entered on this candle, it looks like you would have gotten the fill. If you're going for maybe two points, you'd have to sit through this. But if you kept your discipline and kept your stop one tick below here, but probably one tick below this double bar, because this is more definitive as a support, then definitely this candle probably would have given you whatever two, three point scalp you're looking for. Prices then continue moving up, starts breaking out of, I drew this as like a support trend line going up and I kind of matched it here. So when this candle formed, I thought, okay, I'm probably in this purple channel. You have a new high, first entry long, second entry long. The second entry long is decent, except it's far from the EMA. It's kind of in the middle of nowhere. It's a little ambiguous to me because I thought we're still potentially trading in this trading range. That I did at this point drag this trading range to the lows here. And then I utilized this midline as where the previous trading range was. So it's kind of like a two tier trading range, and this is the upper tier. So here I'm wondering if prices are going to get pulled back in. Looks like the dance is a little bit longer. And here, you if I did try to enter this, I think I would have gotten stopped out. It breaks out of this purple up channel, but that's okay. This purple up channel, I didn't have much confidence in anyways, because it only fit twice and maybe a third time here and only really fit twice up here. So you could actually see these as little, little multiple legs. Prices then move down, you have first entry long. Technically you have a second entry long, but you also have a new low here, say first entry short. I'm thinking a second entry short. I actually really thought this is a rather nice setup. The reason why is we have this purple ambiguous up channel. So I'm not giving too much confidence in this. It has a break, it tested the high, but it pushed down strongly on this orange down channel. This orange down channel made one attempt up, pull back second attempt up. So it made two attempts up. It's having trouble at the EMA. So what it's telling me or what I'm interpreting this is this yellow down channel wants to test this low and it made two attempts up. So I think it's gonna continue now to try to test the lows here. So you could potentially see one leg, two attempts up and then a second leg to kind of match the magnitude of this leg. I also like that it broke above the EMA and then it failed and came back down. This green channel doesn't exist yet. So I thought this is a potential trade, even though this is an inside bar, I like that it closed below the EMA and closed near the low after making a double top. So I think this is a possible trade that would have been worth taking. So it looks like it would have gotten the fill here, even if I kept it at the lows or I kept it one tick, would have gotten the fill and definitely one of these two candles would have given you the profit. Price then continue chopping. And it looks like it's fitting on this potential resistance. This green down channel looks like it's kind of fitting pretty well. So I marked this here because I saw this as a new low, it's a first entry short here. And then it kind of creates a second entry short, but I don't like that the second entry short is an inside bar. It, it's a decent signal bar, but what I really want is one push down, push up. I wanted this bar. Let me back up one. This bar to actually tick, maybe one tick above here and then come back down close just like it is here. Very bearish. And I can see one push up. It comes up, it traps some bulls and then comes back down. But this is an inside bar, so it's a little iffy. The only thing you could argue for is the EMA, but there's no EMA touch, so it felt dicey. And then once you have a confirmed second entry short, so now you know, because here you're anticipating second entry short, here you have a confirmed second entry short, the trigger bar is a doji. I don't like that because it shows indecision. It means that bulls could be coming in to reverse this for whatever reason. It could be one attempt up, push back, and then maybe the second attempt up. I have no idea. So it's a little uh, not clear to me. So I decided to leave it alone, but I left this black arrow here just to, for my own notes to kind of keep note of something like this. I would, the thing that would have made me think about taking a trade is if this trend line coming down fit nicer. In other words, these prices didn't break above it. Like it all stayed obediently right here. You know, it didn't, it had trouble breaking through, but since it's showing violations above, you know, it's, it's a little bit less strong of a setup. Then prices continue moving down. It consolidates here. Technically have a new low, first entry short, second entry short, second entry shorts confirmed right here, but this isn't a very good signal. It's a good signal bar, but it doesn't give you enough room to scalp out confidently. And it looks like it's bottoming out because in real time you see this and you're wondering, hmm, 
this looks like it's losing a little bit of strength on the down push. Here, not only do you have a confirmed second entry short, the trigger bar closed bullish. So you don't know what's going on now. Is it going to continue on the next count down or is it looking like it's starting to create a failed second entry short? So definitely not, no trade here, leave it alone. It gets just too, too uh, congested, pushes up, pushes back, and it looks like it's going to try to test the, this trading range that I drew. It looks like it's pushing back up to the top. So what I'm noticing is this trading range isn't a very strong range right now. There is some kind of resistance here, but it's not coming back down to meet the lows. And if I drew another line here to try to find the lows, this is the only real confirmation that it has, plus that's another fail breakout here. So it's a little iffy overall in terms of trusting this as a trading range. It's coming back, <clears throat> chops around, it starts drifting up. It creates a double top here. I'm keeping an eye on this. It creates a first entry long. There is no second entry long. You could say there's a hidden second entry long here. So it's like a first entry long here. Here, it breaks down below and then closes and pushes all the way back up. So you could say it's a first entry long and in the life of this candle, it creates your second entry long. The problem I have with this setup is it looked like for sure there was some kind of resistance here. So if you were to take this trade, you don't have any room to scalp out before you potentially hit this resistance again. So it's a dangerous trade. Prices move down. So I do see this is a new high because count resets here. The first entry long pullback, you have a second entry long here. You also have a new low here, first entry short, second entry short. And then on this candle, it creates the second entry short failure. The problem is this candle, as it was forming, because I did draw this as a potential trend line support, it closed so far below the EMA. You could argue it's bouncing off this support, but the way it closed is there's too much tail here because it, look what just happened. It opened down here, it did a bunch of things, and then toward the end, or right when it, when it finally closed, it was crushed all the way back down to here. So although it's a green candle, it's a bearish green candle. So here, nothing's telling me to get ready for a long, unless I just truly believe I have this correct trend line, which I don't because I only have two, three confirmations right now. So it's a little iffy. When this candle forms, okay, then I know, okay, first entry short, excuse me, first entry long, second entry long, New low, first entry short, second entry short, confirmed failed second entry short. So this could have been a trade, except in real time, there was no way for me to decipher this. So I thought, okay, I definitely have to wait for a higher low confirmation, ideally above the EMA, pushes up. You create a higher low here, and it, you could argue it's bouncing off here, but this is a terrible signal bar because it closed so bearish, even though it closed above the EMA. Seeing this in real time, I don't know if the next candle is actually going to tick lower. And when this one finally opens and closes, it's too late to try to take an entry because I definitely wouldn't want to take it on the engulfing of this candle moving past the highs of here because I'm also hitting this potential resistance now. So unfortunately, this higher low doesn't set up well. Then pushes up. <clears throat> I see a new low here, first entry short, second entry short. Failed second entry short, but this failure just barely occurred. So it's like, Right here, new low, first entry short, second entry short, failure. It's pushing above this resistance. And I just didn't feel uh, like it feels a little dicey. It does push above. It's a possible trade if you're super aggressive because you are making higher lows now and higher highs. And this yellow up channel, it looks like it's holding now. So you could trust it, but definitely too, too risky in my opinion. Who knew that this big candle would have appeared and just pushed up so hard like that? Pushes up. So it's breaking out of this yellow channel. And I thought, okay, maybe there's another kind of like a green channel coming up. It breaks out, breaks down. Is the second entry long here? It's a bad signal bar below the EMA. I don't like that. As it's pushing up, I think there is a overlapping orange channel because it fit nicely here, here, and here. And then on the top side, it looks like it's fitting pretty well here. So now I'm working with this potential orange up channel. It consolidates. I don't like these three dojis in a row. So it's telling me to just wait. Again, it's just very congested here. Nothing that I particularly like. Here you do have a new high. Technically, you have a new high here. You have a first entry long pullback. You technically have a second entry long. But <clears throat> I was looking at this potential as a range. So if you're taking it off of here, you could argue there is a orange up channel support 
and you're at the bottom of the range. But the bottom of the range, there's a little bit in, it's just not as clean as I'd like because you could say the range is maybe down here or even a little bit higher. So it's just a little bit unclear. I don't like that. Plus, by the time this candle, because this is an inside bar, by the time this candle opens and closes, it's too late for any kind of trade because you'd be buying at the high of the range. And then you get this doji to even make you even more nervous. Then you have two red candles afterwards and then finally moves up. But it there's nothing that gave clear indication that, that it, that's exactly what it would have happened. Because it could have easily just kind of gone back the other way. Prices move up. I see a new high here. It's the first entry long pullback. Technically, you have a second entry long. It's confirmed here. It's a decent signal bar, but it's also an inside bar. So I called it kind of like an almost trade. <clears throat> It didn't quite bounce off the EMA, and I needed the bounce off the EMA, or at least bounce off this orange support, ideally off both, but it never did that. And I needed, ideally, this candle not to be inside. I What would have been great is if it ticked one tick below and then reversed and closed just like it did here. Then you see that, okay, it's crapping some bears by one tick and then reversed hard. Then when you get this candle as a confirmation of the second entry long, then I would have thought, okay, I'm going to get a trade ready, put it ready. At the high of this one and so when the next candle prints i either get picked up and i do and likely would have gotten the fill and prices continue moving it breaks out of this orange channel makes kind of two legs down it hits here it's kind of confirming this yellow up channel but this yellow up channel only fit well down here and then it went into this orange up channel so i actually drew it as a superimposed purple channel to try to capture this as one big leg so what really matters at this point for me is looking for trades that would bounce off of this confirmed yellow or purple support because they're overlapping. Here you could have made the argument, okay, it's one leg up, pull back, second leg up. It's not a very good signal bar. It is confirming twice. You could have maybe taken a trade, but I just didn't think it was that safe. I wanted to see a higher low. And unfortunately, you don't get a higher low. And now if I do get a higher low, too late because it's already pushing to the highs. It moves up on this green channel, breaks and breaks out of this purple channel, drifts outside. It actually breaks above the pre-market high. So now it creates this U structure. And I'm thinking maybe is this potentially kind of like going to end up kind of like a cup and handle where it pulls back for the handle and then push back up. Technically, you have first entry long second entry long right here but it's a little bit kind of in the middle of either entering or re-entering this purple channel and i wanted ideally a bounce off of this ema so no real trade <clears throat> technically you have a new low first entry short you have a second entry short here i don't like taking a i don't like using a doji as a signal bar unless the, the setup is absolutely positively perfect and everything else is going for it but if you have to use the doji as a signal bar as one of the main reasons or key entry points, then it's better to avoid it. Pushes back down, hits the bottom of the purple channel. So I'm thinking, okay, at an overshoot here, could there be a matching overshoot and push back up? The yellow down channel is in place, so I'm expecting it push to the new low. Here it is. It looks like it's coming back down. So it looks like it made one attempt. This could be a second attempt. It could be a new high. First entry long, second entry long, but it's not really good. Uh, setup because it's just kind of in the middle of nowhere. Kind of consolidates. It looks like it creates some kind of triple test support. Not quite a trading range yet because there's no clear resistance up here. You just have a support and a fourth one here, but unfortunately, there's no clean trade that I could find. You could argue there's a new high, first entry long, second entry long, but I would say it's more of a second entry long off of nothing. So it is a second entry long, no doubt about it, because it tried two times, but what is the context? The context is it pushed down, made one attempt up, pushed down, it's consolidating. Is it really going to go back up from here? It could, or it can make a second leg down. Hard to know. Pushes up, it goes up on this orange channel. Again, it hits the pre market highs. You do have a second entry long here, but it's a doji. It's not a good signal bar. It's far from the EMA. So the break of this yellow up channel does test and make a new high. It continues up. Technically, a new high here, first entry long, second entry long. This is a bad signal bar, middle of nowhere, too far from the EMA. Now, it's starting to move down. I'm not that thrilled about this channel because it doesn't fit very nicely, but it does 
kind of give you a directional bias of you know seeing that potentially it's moving back down breaks out now it seems like this is a, like a spike in a channel because if you wanted to try to capture this all it's too big a range a too big a channel so you definitely keep it here and i was thinking okay maybe it's like one channel and then maybe a second channel down this way but it didn't look and fit quite right plus i kind of gave up not gave up but i kind of decided there's no trade worth taking because it's getting so close to the end of the day so if you're still trying to trade or looking for a trade there'll be no worth no trade worth taking here because it's just too dicey now Prices right, so then get, hit this consolidation area. I just kind of drew this blue box to say, okay, there's some kind of consolidation, some kind of noisy trading here, but definitely not nothing I feel confident about because it's just dojis and pretty much neutral candles or candles of very small bodies. And it just kind of pushes into the close. And as you can see in the aftermarket, the prices are just pushing hard and probably uh, consolidating here. And the only thing I can attribute that to is there's quite a few companies reporting earnings at least in the next couple of weeks. They already started last week. Today, the two big guys were Microsoft and Alphabet. And they released it, I think, within the first five minutes of regular trading hour close. So when they went up, I think it dragged up the other, you know, the entire market up a bit because people are feeling more confident. It's kind of a bullish sentiment. So overall, there was um, it wasn't the easiest uh, day to find trades, and it wasn't even the easiest to interpret what was happening. So. I'm okay leaving with no trades, so hopefully that was helpful.